guys, my name is Kelly. I'm, I'm Jason. We're husband and wife owners of 1889 Pizza Napolitana. And we are so excited to have Junior Achievement in the Northwood Shopping Center Absolutely. very soon. 47th admission, it's a good one. So. Well, we are here. We're gonna do a quick little video about our business, um, what we do here at 1889. And then we're also going to show you how to make some pizza at home, since I know a lot of us are spending a lot of time at home. But one thing that we do have here are wood-fired ovens. Um, we just use a natural oak wood and we pop it in the oven and that's the only thing we use to cook with here at the restaurant. Um, it makes it a really unique and flavorful uh, taste. There's no electricity, no gas. So um, beyond that, um, it's about a 90 second bake time, 1,000 degrees. These ovens are 6,000 pounds each. How's it going guys? Uh, we are now in the dough room. So we make our dough daily. The rise time is five days and we do it in a really cold atmosphere. But before we can do that, it is simply uh, imported Italian Caputo double zero flour, salt, water, and yeast. And then it goes into this lovely machine and out comes the dough ball and then it rises for five days so um, we, we try and do it just the old-fashioned way so as you can see we've changed locations um, we wanted to give you a few pointers on making pizza at home I know everybody's doing a lot of activities at home these days and so we wanted to give you some tips and tricks if you're not gonna come and dine with us on how to make a great pizza while you're at home one thing to note is, as Jason mentioned, we make our dough every day and we actually sell a lot of pizza dough for people to take home and make pizza themselves. So you can buy this dough and take a bunch of the work out of it for you. Um, so a few tips on how to make a good pizza at home is you want to preheat your oven. We've pre preheated ours to 500 degrees. And then you want to make sure to add a pizza stone in as well when you preheat. That will just give your crust a nice crisp and it'll help cook evenly all the way through. Um, and so a few tips on how to make a pizza. When you get the dough, you want your dough to be at room temperature. It makes it a lot more soft and pliable. The other thing is you really can't have too much flour. So you never want the dough to be sticky on your hands. So we're gonna open up this dough and make a Neapolitan style pizza. Neapolitan style is about 11 to 12 inches. So we have one size at our restaurant. It's 11 to 12 inches, and we make all of our doughs by hand, just like this. So we'll make it, and then once we are, once you have your dough, you can shake off that extra flour. That's why it doesn't matter how much flour you put on your dough, as long as it's not sticky. We have a pizza peel, of course. Um, if you don't have a pizza peel at your house, Feel free to use a the back of a plate or a cookie sheet or something to build your pizza on. So from here, the philosophy that Neapolitan pizza uses is simple, but very good, very flavorful ingredients. All right, you ready? One, two. Oh yeah. Woo! Having some fun. So we have San Marzano tomato sauce our tomatoes actually come from Italy, they're imported. So once we have our sauce on our pizza, we always suggest using, using fresh mozzarella. It just makes such a difference. Um, our mozzarella we actually get from Wisconsin and we get it in about every other day and it is so delicious. But the Neapolitan style is you take a whole piece of mozzarella and you tear it over your pizza so it melts in like delicious little clumps. And use whole milk if you can because that's where all the flavor comes from. The next step for our pizza and Neapolitan pizza in general is uh, basil, fresh basil. So we'll tear this and put this on our pizza as much or as little as you like. It really enhances the flavor, combines everything together. So this right here, once we add a little extra all right guys so we've got our pizza we did it on broil for about a minute after um 
about five to seven minutes in the oven. It doesn't quite get the same color that we get at the restaurant, but you still have those delicious flavors. Here's just a little bit about how to make pizza at home and a little bit about our restaurant. Um, we're so excited to have you as part of the neighborhood. Um, look forward to partnering with Junior Achievement on other endeavors in the future. Absolutely, guys. Awesome. Good morning, good morning, and welcome. My name is Ray Daniel. I'm a multimedia journalist with KSHB TV, Kansas City's 41 Action News, and I am also, very passionate champion of Junior Achievement and your MC for today's events. Very, very excited to be returning to host the 20th anniversary Junior Achievement Business Hall of Fame. Today is all about shining a light on past laureates, welcoming this year's change makers and innovators into their ranks and lifting up the future leaders, doers, and thinkers of Kansas City JA Kids. You've already seen some trivia from past Hall of Fame honorees, so here's one more fun fact. Did you know there's currently 64 leaders in the JAKC Business Hall of Fame? I know, right? For the last 20 years, JAKC has honored 64 of Kansas City's most influential business people with recognition into the Hall of Fame. Soon, there will be five more. You'll find out about the contributions of this year's edition shortly, and we'll be among the first to learn of an exciting announcement regarding the future of JAKC Business Hall of Fame and real-world learning opportunities for JA kids right here in our area. Finally, throughout our time together today, you'll meet several young people who have big plans for their futures, futures which have been safeguarded by the Junior Achievement Champions right here in this room. During our time together today, we rejoice at what has been accomplished for kids in our region and use that energy to ensure the next generation has their chance to shine bright. I would now like to welcome Megan Sturgis Stanfield, President and Chief Executive Officer of Junior Achievement of Greater Kansas City. Thank you so much, Ray. Today I want to shine a light on the role models, parents, teachers, and mentors who have empowered me with confidence and skills which have helped me forge my future as a leader. As a young person, I was blessed to be surrounded by caring adults who inspired me who, and who took the time to help me navigate the hurdles, mistakes, and barriers I faced on my path to my goals. Their commitment to my future sparked my own passion for connecting kids to JA champions and resources to help them find their way to fulfilling careers and lives. Without the champions in my past, I could have never envisioned my future as it is today. But who are they? They're people just like you. You, each of you watching today, are forging futures for the next generation. Thank you for showing JA kids what's possible for them and for our great city. You give your resources and expertise to elevate young people around you. Some of you have been igniting a spark for decades, giving and volunteering with us year after year because you know how critical it is to prepare today's youth to be tomorrow's visionaries. For others, this is your first day as a JA champion, and let me be the first to welcome you to the team and to the family. Whether you are a newcomer or a familiar face, each of you will have a chance to make a choice today that can protect the potential of a JA student forever. Every child deserves to believe in themselves and to have the tools to do it. Why do JA champions continue to make a difference year after year? Because you know you can't be what you can't see. You show students there are no limits to their potential. There is nothing more rewarding and a life-changing opportunity. Before I introduce our first JA student, I wanna thank you for your generosity. You share your time, talent, and tools with JA kids because it makes a clear impact in their lives. You give so they remember when an adult inspired them with the confidence to push forward and shine bright. Thank you. I'm honored to welcome a young person to show you firsthand the impact of your support. You have inspired this young lady to use what she learned in junior achievement to try to make an impact on the world around her. It's my honor and pleasure to introduce you to Samaya. Hello everyone. My name is Samaya. I'm an eighth grader at Lincoln College Preparatory Academy Middle School and a JA student. Last spring, I used what I learned in junior achievement to start a business. I like to bake and a lot of my friends do too. So we decided to sell what we made to raise money to help the Australian bushfires. We had to figure out how to get materials, how to sell what we made, and how much to charge. 
Our school told us we needed administrative permission, so I wrote a proposal about why we were starting the business, what we needed, and who was in it. Unfortunately, the pandemic shutdown happened before we could launch the business, but I know I can try again in the future because of my JA experience. The JA volunteer mentors really supported me and helped me learn how to manage my finances so that I can get my ideas off the ground. I know that not everyone has had the opportunities I've had though. Kansas City has many other kids who need the inspiration and knowledge that JA gives. Students need adults like the people we're honoring today and like each of you to recognize their potential. It is almost time to celebrate this year's honorees and their accomplishments. As you learn more about them and hear their advice, keep in mind there are countless Kansas City kids still waiting on the opportunity to shine bright and you can help. You will have the chance to forge futures with students like me. You, we need to raise $37,000 today to help young people shine bright tomorrow. We cannot reach that goal without your commitment to empowering students with the tools they need to strive for successful and meaningful futures. You are a big reason why my future is so bright and why other kids will have bright futures too. But enough about me. Let's meet this year's honorees. As we hear about the achievements of these accomplished Kansas Cityans, a few of my friends, I have some questions for them though. I hope they're ready. Without further ado, I'm excited to recognize our first honoree today, winner of the 2020 Kansas City Interbear Award, City Gym KC. City Gym KC was founded in 2011 by KC area native Haley Bland Walsh. Haley breaks barriers of one of only a handful of female gym owners in the nation. Over the past nine years, City Gym KC membership has exploded and currently sits at over 2,000 individuals. The Waldo location had a significant expansion in 2014, now filling more than 11,600 square feet. Haley's company employs 60 people and 15 personal trainers, has received numerous business and fitness accolades, and prides itself on being a model of inclusivity in the KC health and wellness industry. City Gym KC is honored today for positively disrupting its industry, creating jobs and opportunities, and applying innovation to help solve critical social and economic problems. Please join me in welcoming Haley Bland Walsh, CEO and owner of City Gym KC, recipient of the 2020 Kansas City Innovator Award. Before we accept this award, may I use this opportunity to ask questions and ask give some advice? <laughs> what is the most challenging thing about being a woman in a male-dominated industry, and how have you overcome that? Great question, Samaya. I don't know about all of you, but hopefully you're as impressed with her as I am and as impressed with that question. So when I think about what makes a good leader, I think about authenticity. And authenticity comes from really stepping into your diverse lived experience. So rather than thinking about how a male might run my company or that I'm in an industry that's led often by men, I spend a lot of time thinking about my life and the experiences I've had um, and leading from that place. I think that's the most important thing when you're talking about leadership is not how someone else might do it differently, but how your unique diverse lived experience makes you, as you obviously are, the very, a, a very amazing leader. So I, uh, I'm obviously incredibly, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Ray. I just okay. stepped on your lines. Haley, you want to be your authentic self, and I think that's so <laughs> huge uh, to take away. And that was such a great question, Samaya. And again, a huge congratulations to you, Haley. And City Gyms well-deserved recognition of the 2020 Casey Innovator Award. So let me go ahead and let you do your acceptance speech, if you'd like. <laughs> Thank you. Obviously, I'm thrilled to be here, um, and I'm incredibly honored and humbled to be the recipient of the Innovator Award. My sincere thank you to Junior T Achievement for this recognition. I can't think of a word that better describes this year as a business owner. It goes without saying that this year has been extraordinarily hard. But one of the lessons that I have gleaned from all of this pain and struggle and strife has been the power of creativity. My team has worked tire, tirelessly to apply every ounce of creativity we can muster to serve our clients in new, safe, and innovative ways. That's the power of small business. 
the way in which we respond to challenges with a powerful pivot. For that reason, this award is really for my team. I couldn't do it without them. People ask me all the time why I started my own business. The truth is, I was tired of my boss telling me no all the time. <laughs> that and I came from a family of entrepreneurs. Like the students who are part of this amazing program, I too received an education in entrepreneurship by having a front row seat, watching my parents start and run successful businesses. Having that example instilled in me the mindset needed to be a business owner. That is the power of this incredible organization. These young people, like Samaya, are receiving the education and mentorship necessary to inspire them to one day start their own businesses. What an important impact that will make in our world. I first fell in love with Junior Achievement when Megan invited me to participate as a judge in a semester-end pitch contest. I left feeling deeply inspired by young people's passion and wisdom. It was clear the way Junior Achievement was fostering something very important in our next generation of leaders. In a world that feels uncertain, one thing is sure. Junior Achievement is doing the amazing work to empower our young people to be fierce leaders. Knowing that gives me hope for our collective future. Thank you again. Yes, a huge congratulations again, Haley. And next, I'm pleased to begin the 2020 Business Hall of Fame Laureate induction. Hall of Fame laureates are Kansas City business leaders who have made outstanding contributions to our community. For 20 years, we've gathered to recognize the ways Hall of Fame laureates have influenced the Kansas City business community. This year, five accomplished professionals joined their ranks. We're grateful for the impact these individuals and all our laureates have had in shaping the Kansas City business community. They elevate the future of our community with their innovative spirits and act as role models for young people still defining their place in the world. Today, I'm excited to introduce our first two Hall of Fame laureates, Davion Ross and Bruce Ayani. Together, Davion and Bruce co-founded Data Driven Sports and invented Shot Tracker, an innovative tool that delivers comprehensive real-time sports statistics and insights directly to teams, broadcasters, and fans. Their product disrupted the sports industry by integrating sensor technology directly onto players, equipment, and the court, providing nearly instantaneous data. Talk about a game changer. Watch this video to learn more about their success and why they're being recognized today. Bruce is tenacious, he's ambitious, he loves to make something out of nothing. Generous, gifted, and steadfast. He's very inspirational, so he's a good leader, and he's highly competitive and he's got you know, an internal optimism. And he's got probably more humility than most people who've built businesses like he's built. As a young kid, my dad said three things to me. He said, you know, you can do anything. God has a special plan for you and you should have your own company someday. So he's, you know, somebody that influential says that enough times, you tend to start to believe him. Bruce's biggest accomplishment, I believe, is building globally competitive, cutting edge technology companies right here in Kansas City. Bruce and his partner Davion, I think they created a unique partnership in building Shot Tracker. If I had three words to describe Davion, they would be steadfast, faithful, and visionary. He's really on multiple dimensions. He knows how the business works. From the tech side, he understands tech, so he's able to put those two together. He's someone who can take the ball and make something happen. His desire to win is really what is, has enabled him to grow as a person and grow companies. One of the reasons Davion's been successful is he is a great athlete, he is a great entrepreneur, but he knows he needs a great team and great coaches around him to be successful. He's very faithful to his family, to his company, um, to, to God, uh, to his friends, and he's a visionary, right? He has a vision, he can cast that, he can inspire others to achieve it with him. I really think it's important to, to share the success. There's so many people behind the scenes that are making that success happen, and a lot of times they don't get the credit associated with it. It takes a village, and you know, I get really excited when the village wins. I think Shot Tracker as a company has inspired the city to realize that we can build globally competitive technology companies right here from Kansas City. 
You know, where I've seen Bruce and Davion really give back is really going to be around the entrepreneurial world where they're encouraging younger entrepreneurs, they're showing up and they're mentoring, they're helping. I've been very fortunate to have great mentors and friends that inspire me to, to be the best that I can be. I'm an entrepreneur because of what I was told and shown when I was a youth. Junior Achievement takes that young mind and fills it with possibilities of what they can do and what they can become. For those young people that are thinking about pursuing a career in business, my advice to them would be to follow your passion. Play as many roles as possible when you're young. Get as many internships as possible so that you can see what component of business you are most excited about and you think you could be the most successful in. You don't ever score if you don't shoot. So if you get the opportunity to take chances, take risk, you should do it. If you don't get that shot up, you may miss, right? But you're gonna learn a ton. Go for the applause the money will follow, else it's a grind. And there's too many unhappy people in this world. And rewrite the rules. You make the rules, I love that. Now I do have a young friend who would like to ask Davion and Bruce a question. Laith, go ahead and introduce yourself and then you can ask your question. Hello everybody, my name is Laith. I'm a student at Olathe Northwest. My favorite class is social studies because I enjoy learning about the United States. When I grow up, I wanna be a doctor. My question is, how do you come up with ideas and how do you know if it is a good idea? Yeah, so Laith, uh, great question. Uh, how do you come up with ideas? Well, uh, I'll share with you how I do it. And that is, I, I first actually get to a quiet place and pray. I ask God to help fill my mind with uh, uh, amazing ideas that uh, can scale commercially. And it might sound funny, but the place where that usually happens, I, I let it go and I go about my daily uh, activities, and the place that the idea springs to life actually happens for a lot of entrepreneurs. It might sound silly, but it's in the shower. And a lot of entrepreneurs actually experience that. So that's how the idea comes. How do you know if it's a good one? Uh, well, you have to share your ideas. So don't be afraid once you have an idea to share it with people and then watch how they react to it. If they're positive about it um, or they get excited about it, you might be onto something. But be careful because um, oftentimes you'll get people excited about it, but they'll be naysayers and say, well, that'll never work or you can never do that. And that's when you know you can't do it. So I think uh, most entrepreneurs live by um, a few words. There's got to be a better way. So how I traditionally come up with ideas is most times I'm going about my, my way of life. You know, you have expertise in different domains. And as you're going through that process and you're interacting with products, you, you start thinking, wow, there's got to be a better way, right? There's got to be a better way, whether it's mail versus email. Or, 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 or different things in technology. So from my perspective, I try to always put myself in a situation where I can identify opportunities and ways to better implement things that, or, or better products that would be solutions to make life easier. So that's how I identify the product, the, 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 the idea. I think there's a very different um, definition of an idea versus a business. Not all great ideas turn into great businesses. And I think that's something that you have to validate. Um, you go through this market validation process of being able to talk to people about your idea. And the thing that should get you the most excited is if you can get people to pay for your idea. Um, if people are gonna pay for your idea, then it helps to validate that it's a good idea that could potentially turn into a great business. Great answers, thank you so much. And thank you, Laith, for your great question. Davion and Bruce, again, congratulations on your induction into the JA Business Hall of Fame. Feel free to go ahead and say a few words. Yeah, well, I would just like to say thank you to JA. What an honor to receive this recognition. JA, you are doing the important work of setting the mindset uh, to our youth, reestablishing the trajectory that they're on, uh, what they can become in this world, what things that they could do to help better our world. So it's wonderful to receive this recognition. Thank you so much. Keep up the awesome work. And uh, I'd like to echo Bruce's thoughts. Um, I feel really blessed to be here, and this is truly a privilege. Um, 
you know, I want to thank my, my family. Um, they're, they're watching from Trinidad, which is pretty cool. And uh, my wife, my kids. Um, again, it's really a privilege. One of the things that I think about is that um, I always say that it, it's important to, to, to really inspire youth and kids because the mind of a child is, is an incredible thing. Um, if you think back to when you were a child, when you were a child, you thought you could do anything. Um, you're not worried about the inhibitions. You're not worried about the limitations. What will people think? You know, they show you a cardboard box and everybody else sees a cardboard box, but you see a UFO, you see a, a, a brand new car. Um, so the thing that I would say is that I'm excited about what Jay is doing because what they're doing to Bruce's point is they're inspiring children, young adults to really be able to eliminate any limitations and to be the best that they can be and, and, and to build, you know, great opportunities, great business opportunities. So for me, this is um, as inspiring as it can be. It's really a privilege and I'm very grateful for this opportunity and thankful. And thank you to JA and to all of you. Amazing, amazing. Well, of course, we got to give them another congratulations. Davion Ross and Bruce Ayani, 2020 Junior Achievement Hall of Fame laureates. Congratulations. And I think many of you will recognize our next honorees in Kansas City Power Couple, Christine and Sandy Kemper. Christine and Sandy Kemper each have a long list of accomplishments. Christine is the founder of Kemper & Company, a marketing and research consultancy that has advised local, national, and global brands since 2002. She's also a passionate community advocate, most recently assuming the position of the founding chair of the Kansas City Girls Preparatory Academy. In 2008, Sandy founded C2FO, a financial technology company, and the creator of the first market for working capital. He also works as an angel investor and serves on the board of several organizations. Together, the pair has also started YepKC. It's an organization focused on nurturing the spirit of entrepreneurship in high school students. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the power of their entrepreneurial spirit. Sandy has many qualities I think are quintessentially entrepreneurial. He's smart, he's intelligent, he's philanthropic, always forward thinking. He has sort of a fearless approach to life and an energy that you really want to keep up with. C2FO I think is a powerful model for our community that reminds us that entrepreneurship can thrive in Kansas City, that its successes and unicorns are not limited to the coast. He never sees any roadblocks, there's no box you can keep his ideas in. And that's why we are so ahead in what we do of others because we are seeing two, three, four, five years ahead of what where we need to go. We have offices in China, India, UK, etc. And that can only happen when Sandy as a leader is able to give responsibility and accountability to others. I think his ability to both attract and retain great talent um, has been key to his success. It's an endeavor for me to create on a platform to try to do good in the world. I think the most important thing is to realize to always keep ego in check and to always be grateful for the things that you've been able to do and to give credit to everyone else besides yourself. You have to mention Christine, who is a great entrepreneur in her own right, accomplishes probably as much as humanly possible. I am better for the privilege of knowing Christine Kemper. She brings out the best in people. She makes me a better version of myself. Everything she puts her mind to, she does with full force. She is selfless, she is passionate, and she is inspired. Those are the very definition of Christine Kemper. She is simply a person who gives. Christine's entrepreneurial spirit is what drove her to complete this job of Girls Prep Academy. She's a person who understands the value of diversity and inclusion. I want the next generation to do better. We have systemic racism and issues of inequity across our community and our country. And the firm belief, which Sandy and I share, which is that education is really the only way to create opportunity. 
I never dreamed of being an entrepreneur. That wasn't what I was setting out to do. I just wanted to have an interesting career. Growing up, I think I thought the paths were doctor, lawyer, teacher, you know, that th there were set paths that I could take. And the difference now is I realize you can make your own path. Generally, as you think about starting companies, the way I've thought about it, and I think the way Christine does as well, is that it doesn't take much to think about a product. It really doesn't take that much to start a company either. You want to start a whole new industry? Nah, that gets interesting. All right, so find a way to create an entire new industry, and then you've got a podium and a platform that might, in fact, change the world. Okay, so before we let Christine and Sandy go, there is a question from Cameron and Kyler. Go ahead and ask your question. Thanks, Ray. I'm Cameron, and I go to Pembroke Hill News. I love math and art, and someday I hope to become a self-employed artist. And my name is Kyler. I go to Crossroads Academy. We are virtual this year, but my favorite class is still science. I'd like to be a paleontologist when I grow up. We would like to know, who you looked up to when you were younger? What did you learn from them? I hope you'd be a better leader today. Um, it, you know, I think it may be cliche to say that I looked up to my parents, but it is absolutely true. They are some of the hardest working, most honorable, trustworthy, um, fantastic people that I know. And in each of their respective endeavors, they were kind of my touchstones for how to be a leader, how to be a responsible grown-up, how to be a builder, um, not just of things, but of people. So I would name them as the people who were primarily my role models when I was your age. Over time, I've had the distinct uh, pleasure of having lots of role models, especially even the older that I get and, and find myself in new environments all the time. I'm constantly finding new people from whom I have the opportunity to learn. Um, but definitely when I was your age, it was probably my folks and Wonder Woman. <laughs> well, that's pretty good. I, like, I, 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 yes, I think I'm, I'm sure uh, parents are always a big part of one's life growing up. And I, I would add, at least as I was asked, as I asked this, I was thinking immediately, sort of flash back to you know, the, the things I was passionate about were often uh, things that I was reading. I read a lot when I was a kid, uh, and the thing that came immediately to mind for me was, um, sorry, it was. Uh, a Hobbit's Tale, uh, and the adventures, and and challenges, and and sort of for me at least escapism at that time of Bilbo Baggins, and so looking at that, and what it taught me was life's an adventure, life's a journey, and you're going to have ups and downs. Uh, and with with seriousness, I probably had a little bit of a, an authority problem when I was a kid. Truly, I uh, probably still do have an authority problem. Still, so, authority uh, problem. She's often the authority. I don't have any problem with you. Though. That's good. That's wise. But uh, I, thought about, I thought about Bilbo Baggins, and I thought about the adventure, and I thought about the wilderness, and I thought about being out there and, and being with companions and going, going on that journey. And then I thought, um, not so much who, but what. I loved, I loved National Geographic. I loved going to different places visually through those pages. And, and the great joy of my life now, besides being married to you and having a great family. Earning a lot of points is, tonight. <laughs> is, is that we have offices all around the world, places that I... I dreamed of going and seeing, and now I'm, I'm there with great frequency with teams that are extraordinary who are leading our company forward. So, I, you know, for me, the, the thing I looked up to was, yes, parents, yeah, absolutely, uh, but imagination and curiosity and, uh, and sometimes tenacity, getting out there and, and just going and doing and learning and growing along the way. So that, to me, was what came to mind when that lovely young lady asked the question. But to be clear, not Sauron and so, not the Dark Riders. Had, Definitely had, Bilbo, there's, there's, there's Frodo, always, there's always an enemy. Gandalf. Always an enemy, always <laughs> something that has to be stopped. There's always bad that needs to be taken out and good that needs to be had. As long as you're always the good guy. I'm trying. Still, so, work, still so, working on so, it. So be the good guys would be our parting shot. Yeah, and look for inspiration wherever it may come. Thank you. Be the good guys. Love that. Cameron and Kyler, what a great question. Christine and Sandy, it is our pleasure and honor to welcome you to the JA Business Hall of Fame. Well, really, 
congratulations. When I got the call uh, that the Hall of Fame of Junior Achievement was, was interested, I was delighted until they told me I was really just here to introduce Christine. But as, as one of the two couples that are being inducted into the Hall of Fame, I, I suppose I have some credit. Bruce, Davia, and the other couple, you guys have always been close. Uh, congratulations, Peter. Congratulations on your singular, but I know it's not singular. There's always someone great uh, backing you up, your entire team. But, but honestly, and, and, and with great appreciation, uh, thanks for allowing me to be here to introduce Christine. Christine, congratulations. What do you have to say about this at this time? You know, I'm honored that you could be here to honor me in my moment, it's, and I it appreciate it. And it I'm glad to bring you along. I'm glad to have served as a role model for you. In so many ways. In so many ways. It's very true, actually. And, and I think that's one of, the, one of the lessons maybe here is that you don't get anywhere by yourself. Right? Old proverb, if you want to go fast, go by yourself. You want to go far, go with everyone. Go with as many people as you can find in your cause and your passion and your way. I've been, I've been super blessed to be married to an extraordinary woman who is better in so many things in so many ways than I am. And it's an honor to be recognized. Yes, we both got the award together. Uh, it's an honor to be recognized with her. And I want to tell all of the young members, uh, all of the young team of Junior Achievement, you don't get anywhere without those around you. So. Uh, it's great to be here on stage with my much better half and my partner, uh, my wife, and, and a huge part of my life. Thank you. You well, got, you I, got I, serious. I was invited here for a reason. Yeah, he got serious. And on a serious note for me, it, it truly is an honor to be among all of you, both the folks being inducted and those who came before us. We have been fans of JA for many, many years. I remember as a kid growing up being aware of the program. I unfortunately didn't get to participate in it, so I guess I'm living vicariously through you all. Well, you know, they started in 19, 1919? Yeah, I was almost. Almost, and I was, so I missed yeah. it by four years. Uh, <laughs> But I did, I did participate in a lot of, a lot of my family uh, siblings have participated and been involved in uh, what's now called BizTown in the old days, Exchange City, and before that, uh, another name, it's too far back for me to remember, but what, what a great organization. Uh, what you do and how you do it means the world for our world, and certainly for all of the, the young men and women in your program. So we're honored, but really, we're honored to be part of a world that you've made better. Thank you, Junior Achievement. Thank you. Uh, what a team. Thank you for your contributions to Kansas City, Christine and Sandy Kemper. Last but certainly not least, we are proud to recognize Peter Malouk. Peter is president of Creative Planning. His company provides comprehensive wealth management services to investment management, financial planning, charitable planning, retirement plan consulting, tax and estate planning clients. Peter is also a philanthropist with a heart for the next generation. The Maluk Family Foundation has generously created opportunities in Kansas City to level the playing field for those in need, including support for JA Kids, among many other local organizations. So more to come on that soon, but go ahead and watch this video to learn more about Peter's career and journey. I would describe Peter as thoughtful, generous, and timely. Caring, generous, and smart. He gives incredible advice. He takes you as you come, and then he leaves you in better condition. That is what attracts people to Peter. He's like a magnet. People just, they love the fact that he is there to make sure that they leave in better condition. Peter is the uh, ultimate entrepreneur. He started off making money in college to help pay his way through the University of Kansas, and he's been entrepreneurial ever since. I didn't even know financial planning was a profession. I was always entrepreneurial. I was in junior achievement as a kid and had a lot of small businesses in high school and college, and I kind of found my way into this profession by accident, but I've always loved personal finance, and so I feel blessed to be able to do it every day. And he wants to do more uh, to help other people who aren't as privileged as uh, he has become. Harvesters is incredibly fortunate to have the advocate and ally that we have in Peter Maluk and Creative Planning. Peter was one of the very first donors to reach out to us as COVID unraveled and they've provided millions and millions of meals for people in our communities. So Creative Planning under Peter's helm has gone in and identified what are the things that are really important in Kansas City. 
In terms of being an entrepreneur, I would say he loves adventure. There's no question that creative planning is a very entrepreneurial culture. You know, our growth has been you know, way beyond my expectations uh, from the beginning. You know, in 2004, we started out pretty small and we, on average, grow 30 to 50% a year every year. I think Peter's major accomplishment has been making the word fiduciary something that's in the uh, vernacular now. I think if you're looking at pursuing a, a career in business, know thyself, you know, know what, know what it is you're trying to do and then figure out what's the best map to get there. And usually the best map to get there is to find somebody who's already done it and emulate them. He is generous because if he believes that what you're doing is gonna change lives, he's gonna be invested in it. What a great story. Peter, thank you for sharing your story. And here to ask Peter the last question of the day is Zaid. Zaid, go ahead and take it away. All right, I'm Zaid. I go to Summit Trail Middle School in Olathe, Kansas. My favorite part of school is math because I like to figure out problems. I'd like to be a judge and possibly a sub Supreme Court justice when I get older. Can you tell me what is the most important thing I should know about starting a business? What should I do now if I want to start a business in the future? Hi, Zaid. What a great question. And basically, it all starts with figuring out what can you give people that they need that they're not already getting. So come up with, you want to come up with some idea that people are willing to pay for. And if you can't come up with that idea, there are other ways to succeed with a business. You can take someone else's idea, but make it a little bit better. You can deliver something a little bit faster, or you can have it cost a little bit less. But you're being, being into math and being a problem solver, you're on your way because all businesses are trying to solve a problem. And uh, you, you've got the, good, the right background and attitude to pull that off. What a great answer, Peter. Thank you. And congratulations on your induction into the JA Business Hall of Fame. Would you like to say a few words? I'd love to. <laughs> so when you, when you think back on being a kid, you really don't remember a lot. You pick any grade you want, second, third, fourth grade, you don't remember a lot. But you do remember certain experiences. They, st uh, they stay in your mind. And I remember my mom dropping me off at Brookridge Elementary School. First, I was complaining because it was after school, so it was interfering with my free time. Uh, but she was dropping me off at Junior Achievement. And we were working as a group to figure out how to come up with an idea that people needed and actually create the idea and then market and sell the idea. And that was my very first experience of that. And it really kind of opened up my mind to how all of this works. They don't even teach personal finance in school, but we weren't learning anything in an experiential way that translated into creating and building a business. And I think that's what makes Junior Achievement different uh, than every other uh, cause that Veronica and I are involved with. It really takes people and it empowers them. It gets in their mind early on, helps them think about how they can create something of value to a community. And that's an incredible thing because you're em that empowerment, that education, I am not aware of an other cause in the Kansas City area that takes it in a, this hands-on of a way. And, and creates that memory and that mindset for people that it stays with them the rest of their life. So, you know, I'm honored to get uh, this award from this particular organization, and, and thank you for, uh, for including me. Oh, thank you, Peter. And congratulations again um, for being named a 2020 Junior Achievement Business Hall of Fame Laureate. The JA Business Hall of Fame Laureates are incredible leaders and change makers in our KC region. 2020, as we all know, has been quite a challenging year, but Junior Achievement is staying focused on the future and ensuring our kids have opportunities to live a choice-filled life. So I'd like to welcome back JAKC President and CEO, Megan Sturgis Stanfield, back to the stage to tell us some exciting news and plans for 2021, Megan. Thank you so much, Ray. I've really been looking forward to this part of the program and this exciting announcement since we started planning this year's 20th anniversary event. I cannot think of a better group of people to share the news about the next chapter of JA in Kansas City. This project has been in the works for years as the board of directors, staff, and many community champions have collaborated to ask, what's next for KC Kids? As the project took shape, the planning team identified crucial areas essential to forge futures for KC kids. The community needed an immersive, real-world learning experience for students across the educational spectrum. 
to achieve a quality, comprehensive experience, we needed to highlight how individual and organizational diversity makes our community thrive both culturally and economically. We needed to cre create opportunities for young minds to think critically and strategically, and we definitely need to curate engaged, caring citizens who will choose to live, work, and play in Kansas City when they grow up. JA kids are so eager to apply their classroom lessons and connect them to real world experiences. Education is truly a catalyst for opportunity and economic empowerment. When our kids are successful, our city is successful. Thanks to the incredible support of our community partners at Community America Credit Union, the Maluk Family Foundation, the Sunderland Foundation, the Hall Family Foundation, and our financing partners at Wells Fargo and Central Bank of Kansas City. I am proud to announce that in 2021, a new experiential learning opportunity will be arriving on the Kansas City skyline, serving as a youth incubator curating the next generation of JA Business Hall of Fame laureates the JAKC Youth Learning Lab. Located in the Northwood Shopping Center, New 47th and Avenue in Mission Road, the 22,000 square foot Junior Achievement Youth Learning Lab, presented by the Maluk Family Foundation, will host three unique opportunities for JA kids, be home to the brand new Junior Achievement Business Hall of Fame and the Kansas City JA headquarters. The JA Innovation Center will offer activities that foster an entrepreneurial mindset in students. The JA Career Center will be a hub for middle school kids to examine how they can leverage their interests and skills in future careers and begin to answer the all important question, who can I become? And finally, Community America Credit Union is the signature program of the Youth Learning Lab. Sorry, JA Biztown will transform nearly 14,000 square feet into JA Biztown that's presented by Community America Credit Union, a simulated city with storefronts from homegrown companies like Children's Mercy, Price Chopper, JE Dunn, Evergy, KCPBS, Community America Credit Union, Creative Planning, and Hallmark, just to name a few. JA Biztown, inspired by the former Exchange City, is a capstone experience culminating a series of classroom lessons connecting academics with real life where youth learn how to balance adult responsibilities like going to work, paying taxes, civic responsibility, balancing a budget, and many other real world skills that will stay with them long after they leave for the day. Along the way, young people will be guided by volunteers who model success, determination, and teamwork, and bring those qualities to enhance curriculum carefully designed in concert with JA BizTown storefront sponsors. The Youth Learning Lab will also be home to the new JAKC Business Hall of Fame. Today, we witness the induction of five new Hall of Fame laureates. The new space will inspire the journeys of future Hall of Fame laureates, taking their very first steps towards defining their path. As JA students walk the hall, they will be inspired by the stories of success from our laureates and will imagine a future that includes their face among Kansas City's biggest change makers. The generosity of several local leadership donors has allowed us to start construction, but your help is requested to raise the final funds needed to bring this community asset to life. KC Kids need your help to open these doors in January 2021. Kansas City is a place for champions, but far more than just Chief Super Bowl wins, you are champions of innovation, inclusion, and opportunity. I am confident together you and I can get this touchdown for the future of our young people. So I want to offer you today a first-hand look at our progress so far. I would like to personally invite you to join me for a hard hat tour of the Youth Learning Lab space while it's under construction. Seeing the space in person will blow you away. And while the struggles of today seem insurmountable at times, Investing in a child's future is a surefire way to a more certain tomorrow for them and for our region. The kids who joined us today are counting on you. There is so much at stake for JA kids this year and in the years to come. Not long ago, they were Generation Z, Gen Z, Zoomers. But now they are the pandemic generation, the lockdown generation. The question is, will they become a lost generation? 
The new normal has been an overwhelming experience for all of us, but an especially profound one for today's young people. For many, their hopes and dreams have vanished before their eyes, and the future remains uncertain for the rest. What happens to them today will shape the way they see the world tomorrow. Will they view our nation as a land of hope, opportunity, and unlimited potential? Or as something else entirely? Waiting to see what happens isn't an option. The time to act is now by giving them the tools, resources, and support they need to navigate uncertain times, reach their potential, and create a better future for themselves, their families, and communities. Junior Achievement's proven programs can help them do just that. But we can't do it alone. We are prepared to deliver life-changing experiences to young people, whether they are in person or virtual. But we need your support now if we are to make this happen. An investment today can help create a brighter and more just future. But hope can't wait. As you just heard, there's a lot of risks for people my age right now. Kids today face more hurdles to the education and to their future success than ever before. But the amazing thing about times like these, times of uncertainty and adverse, adversity, is that it also brings opportunity. Right now, you have the chance to provide certainty for my future and for the futures of all JA kids in our area. Right now, you have the chance to make an investment in success. As I mentioned at the beginning of our time together, today we need to raise $37,000. These funds will connect JA kids to mentors and tools that give them the confidence and knowledge and skills they need to rise to their full potential. Now, I want you to decide how you would like to forge futures. There are several ways you can choose to power possibility for JA kids and help us get closer to hitting the 37,000 goal. You can also visit the link to our giving page just posted in the chat box. You can text JA CHAMP, J-A-C-H-A-N-P, one word and I'll capitalize, to 50155 to give you, um, to give from your cell phone. Or you can inspire the next generation through a gift on your Venmo app. No matter how you choose to show your encouragement to JA Kids today, let me be the first to thank you for inspiring my own journey and the journeys of many more JA Kids to come. You are building a legacy of success that will empower today's youth to shine bright tomorrow. Thank you. Go ahead and take the mask off. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Samaya. You are so amazing. And thank you for making a gift right now to forge futures for JA kids in our region. Your generosity is inspiring and sets the stage for youth to build a choice-filled life. Congratulations again to this year's honorees, Kansas City Innovator Award winner, City Gym KC. We would also like to um, recognize the 2020 JAKC Business Hall of Fame laureates, Davion Ross, Bruce Ayani, Christine Kemper, Sandy Kemper, and Peter Malouk. And a special thank you to our sponsors who made today possible and virtual, William T. Kemper Foundation and Community America Credit Union, as well as Ernst & Young, J.E. Dunn, Navholes Construction, Spire, and UMB. And our many founder-level sponsors, and finally, on behalf of the entire JAKC team, I'd like to express gratitude to every one of you for taking the time out of your day to celebrate our business leaders and to power possibility for the future leaders of Kansas City. I know I'm so excited to take that hard hat tour with Megan. Very, very excited for that. And I hope you'll join us on that adventure. So thank you for joining us for the 20th anniversary of Junior Achievement Business Hall of Fame. We look forward to hosting you next November and welcome you, welcoming you into the JAKC Youth Learning Lab in 2021. Thank you so much. Have a great day. <laughs>